the next, um, um, I want to remind everyone to please uh, complete their feedback forms because these go right back to the CEOs and the investors and very important. So um, thank you for that. Um, I, it gives me great pleasure now to introduce um, an author, the former CEO of Roman Haas, um, serves on several boards. Uh, the author, Eight Dollars in a Dream. Did I get that right? Right? It's a great book. It made me cry about three times and gave me tremendous hope. So uh, it gives me great pleasure now to introduce Raj Gupta. Well, thank you, Mark, for selling that book here. Well, in late 2009, I was asked to join the board of Restructuring and a Transforming Story, Delphi Automotive. Delphi, a global automotive supplier, was the predecessor to what is known today as Aptiv, following the spin-off of the powertrain business in 2017. Delphi's initial CEO, Rod O'Neill, had been handed a bankrupt company in 2007 structurally uncompetitive and many fronts that lacked a vision for the future. As the team worked to dramatically improve its cost and technology competitiveness, it was strategic imperative to have a proven public company CFO to aid in this endeavor. We were very fortunate to recruit Kevin Clark with a demonstrated track record of value creation dating back to his days at Fisher Scientific. When Rod retired, the board and our investors viewed Kevin as the most logical successor. As one of the research analysts noted, changing of the guard at Delphi, legend passes Mike to a humble rock star. We are very confident in Delphi's management team, led by Kevin Clark, whose disciplined approach to capital allocation and vision were instrumental in creating today's Delphi. Delphi Automotive went public in November 2011 at $22 a share. By the time the company spun out in 2017, the stock was trading at about $100 a share under Kevin's leadership. And those who invested in it had five times return in that short period of time. Key to that success is active, strong core values, culture of innovation, customer focus, and flawless execution, enabling the next generation software-driven future of mobility. They have stayed true to their values, bold strategy, and vision to make mobility safer, greener, and more connected. That strategy, which you'll hear from more about has proven enduring and will create long-term value for the owners and for the society for the decades to come. And with that, I would like to welcome my colleague and friend, Kevin Clark, to make his presentation on Aptiv. Thanks a lot. So uh, thank you, Raj. And uh, I should put a plug in uh, for the book as well. For any of you that haven't read it, it's, uh, it's an outstanding uh, not only life story but business story uh, as well. So again, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you, Raj. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here again to have the opportunity to talk to, uh, to you about Aptiv. Um, and the Aptiv team, we, we really believe that what we're doing with our business is really at the core of what the CECP Strategic Investor Initiative is all about. We're really focused on long-term sustainable value creation delivered by making the world better, making it more safe, making it more green, making it more connected, and, by, and while doing that, delivering long-term uh, value to our shareholders. So, sorry. The forward-looking statements, um, obviously, I similarly, I won't read, I won't read it. As, to summarize, as you can see, those statements are based on our view of the world today. And obviously, as you see the risk factors uh, in our SEC filings, um, they could, uh, those, those risk factors could, uh, could have some effect. So I'll start with slide three. Um, 
As Raj mentioned, uh, Aptiv has been actively involving over the last several years into what we consider to be a global technology company with really today an industry-leading portfolio advanced solutions that make vehicles more safe, green, and connected and really enable the future of, of mobility. Today, I'd like to expand on how our mission, which is to be the partner of choice for our customers with the brain and the nervous system of the vehicle and how that, and it's really important, how that's created a sustainable business advantage for Aptiv and it's benefited our customers, our employees, our shareholders, and quite frankly, uh, the planet. Now, for those of you who may not be as familiar with Aptiv, uh, if you move to slide four, we believe we're perfectly positioned to win in uh, our markets and in today's environment. Now, we have massive global scale. We operate in 44 countries. We have 125 manufacturing sites, and we employ roughly 160,000 people globally. We have 15 major technical centers throughout the globe where we engineer advanced solutions in vehicle architecture, in software, in compute platforms, as well as in data services. We have 18,600 engineers and scientists, including almost 7,000 focused on delivering software and software systems integration. And we supply our products to major automotive OEMs, commercial vehicle manufacturers, mobility providers, and other emerging non-traditional customers as a result of shared mobility. In 2018, we had very strong financial performance, reflecting really the strength of our competitive position. Revenues totaled 14.4 billion, representing 10, 10 points of growth above the underlying vehicle production market, which is very important in the markets where we operate. And as you can see, our business model translated that revenue growth into very strong earnings growth, as well as cash flow generation, which we continue to invest both organically as well as inorganically to further uh, drive long-term stakeholder value. Now, slide five, so you can see, highlights uh, some of our customers' biggest challenges. So I'm gonna begin uh, on my left with safety. The, the industry, the automotive industry, has had tremendous success over the last 50 years, reducing the number of traffic fatalities. So roughly from five per one million miles traveled um, uh, just a, about 50 years ago, to less than one per million miles traveled today. And they've really done that through the adoption of what we call passive safety systems, airbags, seatbelts, shoulder harnesses, things like that. However, where we are today, the benefits of passive safety solutions really have reached their limits. And in fact, if you look at the statistics in the US, due to the trend in distracted driving, we've actually seen an uptick in traffic fatalities over the last three years. Second is vehicle emissions. Um, today, air pollution is the number one environmental cause of death in the European Union, and the World Health Organization puts it in the top 10 causes of death globally. And as a result, government regulations regarding CO2 emissions are becoming much more stringent. Lastly, increased urbanization and consumer expectations are driving increased demand for intelligent, integrated, and connected solutions. Smartphones, as you've all, as everyone in this room knows, have really become central to how we manage our lives day to day. They connect us to one another, and they also allow us to communicate with an increasing number of connected devices in the ecosystem. This has given rise to a number of novel solutions, lights that turn on when you come home, uh, doorbells and locks that let you know when your child is returned from school, and voice-enabled enter entertainment, just to name you know, a few. Consumers now expect that the same level of digital experience in their vehicle and forward-thinking OEMs in smart cities are really working very aggressively on pursuing these. Now, these are huge challenges. They're significant challenges for our customers. And if addressed, they have the potential to both meaningfully save and improve lives. And there's clear there is a clear technology path to addressing each challenge and we believe Aptiv is very well positioned in finding the solutions. So 
So if you move to slide six, we have examples of some of the technologies we deliver today which help to address the customer challenges I referenced on the prior slide. So I'll begin with active safety again. Our goal is to help enable our customers uh, build vehicles that result in zero traffic fatalities, zero, industry, zero injuries, zero accidents. Um, and we believe we can help to move the industry closer to that goal by delivering the building blocks of active safety systems, perception systems, radar, LIDAR, vision systems, domain controllers, and the high speed and high reliability networks that connect them. The sensor fusion, combining multiple sens sensing modalities that I just mentioned, the radar and vision systems, to deliver the most robust and situationally aware awareness possible, as well as algorithms that interpret all these signals and cause the vehicle to respond appropriately. Moving to green, we're focused on minimizing the vehicle's total, uh, total life cycle impact on the environment, providing the high voltage distribution and connection systems that enable powertrain electrification while also significantly reducing the weight and the mass of the vehicle through smarter, more optimized vehicle architecture. And lastly, we're also helping to deliver the increased connectivity that provides a seamless integration between the passenger, the vehicle, and the uh, Internet of Things. Secured connected gateways, which help send and receive vehicle information through a variety of protocols, cellular, DSRC, radio, GPS. Solutions that allow you to connect your phone to the vehicle, both wired and wirelessly. And we're increasingly enabled over-the-air updates, which allow the vehicle software, and this is, you know, a very important and critical to the industry and firmware to be updated and improved over time. So enhancing the vehicle as it ages. Perhaps one of the most interesting th things though is where these solutions overlap and we're very focused on leveraging all these capabilities in safe, green and connected to address multiple challenges. So for example, our V to X connectivity offering allows us to communicate with other vehicles to improve safety as well as infrastructure to improve traffic management and reduce congestions. And if you bring that all together and you take it to its furthest extreme, auto automated cars, so we have a fleet of roughly 100 plus automated vehicles across the globe, and our analysis basically said fully automated vehicle uh, can reduce CO2 emissions by roughly 8%. The car's optimized, it runs more effectively, efficiently. And importantly, uh, as you can see on the slide, our safe, green, and connected to not technologies position us to benefit from significant content opportunities. You can see from an active safety standpoint, up to $5,000 per vehicle. On the green side, uh, uh, high voltage electrification, 2,000. On connected, up to $3,000 per vehicle, which pre presents us with real opportunities to drive revenue growth and profitability, and at the same time, improve the safety, fuel economy, connectivity that goes on in our industry. Now, turning to slide seven, while the necessary technologies exist today, we're really in the early innings of the vehicle transformation. Global penetration for any form of active safety is in the high teens today. And while that's expected to increase to over 50% by 2025, we expect to see even increased or accelerated adoption of higher levels of automation to improve the overall performance and safety of the vehicle. Global penetration for vehicle electrification is relatively low today. It's at roughly 5%, and it's forecasted to increase to 25% by 2025. And lastly, while a little less than half of all vehicles built today have some form of connectivity, either an embedded modem or a, or, or, or some, uh, or, or a, a smartphone connectivity, that's expected to increase to 80% by 2025 which again creates new opportunities. Now, government regulations and consumer awareness, that's what's really driving the explosive growth in each one of these areas. Moving to slide eight, today's vehicle power, their data, signal distribution systems rely on a technology that's really decades old, that really today is at a breaking point as our customers demand more safe, green, and connected vehicles. As I mentioned, uh, our objective or our vision is to be the preferred partner for our customers thanks to our unique position providing both the brain and the nervous system of the vehicle, the nervous system being the vehicle architecture. 
as a result, as you look at this chart, we're really uniquely positioned and able to conceive, to specify, and deliver unique solutions to our customers' absolute toughest challenges. Increasingly, these solutions are delivered through more advanced software, which is a real change in our industry, which in turn drives the need for more advanced vehicle architecture for it to run on. And to the extent we have more advanced vehicle architecture, again, we can put more software into the vehicle and further optimize performance. So in summary, you know, we feel as though we've developed the industry's only end-to-end -end solution that really enables the full commercialization of new mobility solutions, which is very unique. Now, as reflected on slide nine, we go to market and report our uh, financial results in two business segments, advanced safety and user experience, that's what we refer to as the brain of the vehicle, and signal and power solutions, which is what we refer to as the nervous system. So I'm gonna begin with the brain on, on, on my left. As the need for more complex software development and systems integration expertise increases, our, our unique ability to offer highly functional, optimized solutions across active safety, infotainment, user experience domains has driven strong double-digit growth in this segment the last three years. If you move to the right, the nervous system, or what we call signal and power solutions, is focused on, again, next generation vehicle architectures, including high-speed data and high-powered electrical distribution to, again, enable the advance, advancement of the active safety, automated driving, infotainment, and user experience um, technologies, which ultimately have a huge impact on the future of mobility. This business has been, again, growing above vehicle production, kind of mid-single digits over the last number of years. Now, as I mentioned in my initial comments, revenues increased to uh, $14.4 billion in 2018. That's 10% uh, year-over-year growth. Again, that represents 10 points of growth over market. And once again, it re reflects the strength of our product portfolio and the overall um, scale of our footprint and the fact that both are really aligned to enabling our customers to be more safe, green, and connected. In our overall financial performance really, we feel, validates the, the robustness of our business model that even in slow growth environments delivers very strong earnings, cash flow generation, and is really well positioned to perform in a, a strong way through cycle. Moving to slide 10. Um, again, I'll touch on our product portfolio. Uh, our advanced technologies resulted in $22 billion of new business awards in 2018 record revenue growth across each one of our key product lines. Um, and again, these bookings are really the direct result of what we consider to be our wide, widening competitive moat and our ability to leverage both the capability in the brain as well as the capability in the nervous system to bring a better solution to our overall customers. Beginning with active safety, new customer awards last year totaled 3.9 billion. That topped a prior year record of 3.7 billion which was roughly three times uh, the uh, amount that we booked three years ago. So a very fast growing, fast growing technology. These awards, and it's important for us, include very scalable platforms from, and I'll touch on it later, level zero or level one active safety solutions, all the way up to level two plus and level three active safety solutions that lever it, leverage our unique satellite architecture, which includes both compute power, vehicle architecture, as well as the ability to fuse perception systems. So a, a unique capability. Infotainment, user experience, customer awards totaled 3.2, or 2.8 billion, sorry. Uh, driven by our, uh, principally by our integrated cockpit controller solutions, reinforcing our leadership in central compute. And then engineer components, new customer awards, totaled 6.5 billion. Including 1 billion in high voltage connectors, bringing our 2018 High Voltage Electrification Awards to $2 billion, double from the prior year, and in comparison off a of baseline where today we do roughly $300 million of high voltage electrification solutions. So very high growth uh, product portfolio, as you can see uh, on the chart. Now our continued momentum in new business bookings really validates our ab ability, again, to leverage that unique brain and nervous system leverage our software and hardware foundation that we've created over the, last several, over the last several years, which allows us to provide a real robust solution, but important to our customer, allows us to you know, reduce overall system cost. 
So I'm going to spend a few minutes on touching on each of these. Um, vehicle safety on slide 11. Uh, early warning detection and advanced driver assist systems are providing drivers with the extra half second sufficient to prevent 60% of front to rear crashes. Now that's meaningful. Now if you look at some of the uh, studies that have been out there, one by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, a rear automatic braking system with rear view camera can reduce backup crash rates by more than 75%. If you think about that, that significantly lowers the risk for example, young children. Customers are increasingly willing to pay for this functionality and in fact, Active safety options for our customers, and this is important, have the highest rebuy rate in the market. Safety sells. Once consumers have driven vehicles with active safety solutions, they never go without one for themselves or for their family members. And on average, a level two active safety system provides more than $1,000 of addressable content per vehicle for Aptiv. And studies have shown from a safety standpoint, and I'm gonna to touch on this a little bit later, you can get roughly 80% of the benefit of a full, fully automated vehicle. So statistics say 80 to 90% of, of accidents are the result of human error. Um, but you can get 80% of the, of the benefit of that fully automated system uh, at 20% of the total cost. So significant opportunity to increase safety of the cars on the road. As reflected on slide 12, APT is a, we've always viewed automated driving as on the broad spectrum of active safety solutions. And, and this chart shows, for those of you who are less familiar with it, our industry's definition of various levels of active safety, going from base systems, level zero, all the way up to level five automated driving system where the driver is completely out of the car and a vehicle can drive anywhere at virtually any speed and do it safely. Now, our industry firmly believes that uh, to realize our goal of zero traffic, zero vehicle fatalities, we're going to need to fully automate the task of driving the car. Now, for us, we're uniquely positioned. The same investment we're making today to develop advanced active safety solutions, sensing and sensor fusion policy and path planning and advanced vehicle architectures are the fundamental building blocks for what we're doing to build automated cars. In fact, a significant differentiator for our active safety business is the seamless ability, as I mentioned earlier, to leverage from level zero one all the way up to level four or level five with less re-engineering, which really allows us again to optimize total solution costs and positions us really well for our customers. Which in turn, that drives the acceleration or the democratization of active safety moving from a high cost premium feature set that used to be principally on European luxury vehicles to something affordable for a broader market uh, penetration. And there are a number of OEs, uh, Toyota being the, the initial, who've made active safety uh, solutions standard on all of their vehicles. Turn to slide 13. As I mentioned, APTIV is also guided by the goal of enabling our customers to achieve zero emissions. Meeting the increasingly stringent regulatory standards for CO2 emissions and fuel economy requires advanced technologies across a broad range of vehicle electrification. To meet these standards, customers' demand for powertrain electrification is accelerating. It's growing rapidly. And the vehicle solutions range from anywhere from mild hybrids, 48 volt vehicles, to full battery electric vehicles. I mentioned today, population, roughly 5% of vehicles produced are, are electric vehicles, will be at 25% by 2025. We're well positioned to support our OEM customers with optimized high voltage distribution and connection systems. For Aptiv, this is literally just it's just more of a good thing. As you can see, the addressable content per vehicle on an electric vehicle is up to two times what we have on a non-electrified vehicle. Turning to slide 14, our expertise in multi-voltage solutions is enabling our customers a more seamless transition to electrified powertrain systems. Beginning with hybrid systems, incremental content includes electrical centers, battery monitors, and they're required to, hire, to, to manage higher levels of electrification. 
60 volts or more in a car, that's a lethal charge, right? And that requires more robust shielding, increased high voltage active safety disconnects, providing Aptiv with even more incremental content opportunity. And for plug-in hybrids the full and full electric vehicles, Aptiv provides highly engineered, robust plug-in chargers and cord sets. So in short, our knowledge about vehicle architecture and our knowledge about multi-voltage systems is helping to enable electrified propulsion, which is also adding additional content for Aptiv. Moving to slide 15. <clears throat> now, as an industry, and you read about it, we're seeing a huge paradigm shift in our industry relating, relating to connect, connectivity and being a part of the connected world. The vehicle is no longer a, sta a standalone static object. It's now an important part of the Internet of Things. Vehicles are increasingly defined by the software that powers them, enabled through increased computing power and data management capabilities, which is powering seamless connectivity between the vehicle, its passengers, and the operating environment that's around it. Increased connectivity results in more data, which can be leveraged to identify and solve problems for our customers. Our deep domain knowledge about the, uh, about the car and the industry uniquely positions us to sort through the vast amount of vehicle data that's being generated and focus on that portion which, we can, be, which can be used to create value. And we're going to take a look at a, a couple of those. Starting with our interior sensing technologies, we leverage a powerful combination of our legacy sensor fusion capabilities, predictive analytics, and advanced deep learning algorithms all running on our scalable high-speed compute platform. Our interior sensing systems are able to go beyond distracted driving to really attention management, where we can determine the cognitive load of the driver to determine not just if they're in position, but also mentally ready to resume the task of driving. And that's really important as we go down the path of automated vehicles and move from level two to level three, where a driver can disengage and then needs to re-engage. Using the same hardware, we're also able to determine if a child has been un unintentionally left behind, perhaps sleeping in the back seat. We can determine if an occupant is too hot or they're too cold and adjust the temperature accordingly. And we can use artificial intelligent machine learning capabilities to enable gesture recognition for driver inputs, which today we have technology that was originally launched on the BMW 7 Series that now is on the 5 Series and the 3 Series uh, as well. Moving to the right, our deep domain knowledge also gives us unique insights into the data these vehicles produce. An automated vehicle produces 40 terabytes of data per hour, massive amounts of data, and a huge opportunity, a huge issue or challenge, quite frankly, for our customers to manage, but a huge opportunity to build additional business models uh, to, uh, to, 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 to use that data with. Now, we leverage edge processing to determine what data has value, and we discard the rest. Our real focus is on, let's focus on the needle, not on the haystack. How do we do it intelligently? So the data we collect and analyze is positioning our OEMs to, to address pre- and post-production concerns, which allows them to develop products more quickly, allows them to reduce the cost of engineering, allows them to significantly reduce warranty costs, early recognition of problems. It's also being included in emerging data brokerage ecosystems. We have a partnership with a company called Autonomo, an Israeli data company, where they set up data marketplaces, and some of this data is being used with them to sell to, uh, to monetize with uh, parties outside of our traditional industry. Now, moving to slide two, as, as, I, as I've highlighted, our safe, green, and connected product portfolio is solving our customers' toughest challenge, challenges, and, and we're really committed to delivering these advanced te technologies in a responsible and a sustainable way. Um, that's what we're about, making the world more safe, more green, and more connected. Um, this commitment to corporate social responsibility goes beyond just our products and solutions, right? It, extend, it extends to what powers us, what enables us, most importantly, our people. And these elements of our disciplined, sustainable business create long-term value for our shareholders. And we've, we have programs in place to track a broad range of key performance indicators to ensure we're focused on what really, really matters. And I'll provide a little bit more detail on each of these. Let's start with board of directors engagement. At Active, and I think it's, a, it's really reflected um, in Raj's participation in this event, 
today. The relationship between the board and the leadership team or the management team is really a strong partnership, uh, which encourages a very open dialogue between the board and management. It's very transparent and a true critical uh, review of our business. We work together to perfectly position our product portfolio. We foster a strong ethical culture. We encourage innovation. We promote execution of our strategy. In addition to the traditional um, committees like audit and finance, NomGov, um, uh, comp committee, we have a, a technology committee as well that's deeply involved in our strategy as it relates to product development. Our board of directors is actively engaged on the strategy and risk assessment of our businesses. Meetings throughout the year include deep dives into the business, addressing topics such as sustainability and our ESG priorities, governance, governance and ethics and compliance, strategic product portfolio assessments, talent, culture, financial performance, and capital de deployment, as well as overall investor sentiment and, and, and market sentiment. And importantly, in addition to the regular discussions or, or, or um, uh, discussions that go on at a, from a board standpoint, myself as well as the members of the management team are in regular dialogue with each and every one of our board of, board of directors, whether it's about our business, our customers, our products, or our people. It's, it's, Raj has encouraged a very open um, and collaborative environment, which management has really grabbed a hold of. In addition to having the right portfolio of products and a strong partnership between management uh, and the board of directors, as you all know, you have to have the right people and they have to be organized in the right way. Um, we're continuously focused on employee engagement, diversity and inclusion at all levels of the organization. Our employee engagement connects the organization and helps to promote, to promote our corporate culture, making the world more safe, green and connected. 25% of our board of uh, directors represent diversity and 30% female representation in our, in, sal in our salaried employee base. We're gaining momentum and have made significant progress over the last few years, driving diversity in our workforce. To attract and retain the best talent, we leverage university partnerships. We engage with students and provide continued education opportunities to all of our employees. We've been recognized as one of the world's most ethical companies by Ethosphere Magazine for six straight years running. And we're consistently implementing measures to increase the safety of our employees and continue to work and reduce the environmental impact of our operations. As an example, our lost workday cases, case rate of 0 0.024 per 100 employees is best in class for industrial companies. We're very committed to the people and communities that we operate in through paid time off, encouraging local teams to volunteer, as well as through Aptis Foundation to promote STEM education and community outreach activities. We've built our sustainable business on a foundation of living our values and excellence and execution, which really is our DNA and its core to the Aptive culture. Turning to slide 20, at Aptiv, we're focused on maintaining a performance culture where management compensation is highly aligned with creating long-term sustainable shareholder value. There's a substantial proportion of our pay at risk for the most senior leaders, including myself, and we review our pay for performance alignment regularly to ensure that we're consistently executing on our commitments. Our metrics strongly reflect our focus on cash generation and increasing returns. And we overlay a strategic results model modifier that's aligned with our goals related to talent, culture, and quality. And that's really driven from the board of directors um, on down. And lastly, long-term compensation is designed to attract, retain, and motivate talent. Now, in addition to our regular investor relations activities, we conduct regular outreach to our top shareholders annually to ensure that they understand our compensation philosophy and our objectives. And as a result, we consistently receive very strong say on pay support from our shareholders. So wrapping up, I went a minute or so late. Um, AFTA takes pride in our commitment to building a strong, sustainable business that delivers long-term value to all our stakeholders, our customers, our employees, and our shareholders. We believe that our long-term success as a business and our ability, our ability to increase value are strongly linked to the positive impact we have on a people, product, and planet. 
The successful execution of this business model to date has resulted in significant shareholder returns. Raj, Raj highlighted that. And we remain focused on delivering on our commitments and continuing our track record of outperformance. So with that, we'll open it up for questions. Thank you. Great. You can just see why Raj and Kevin make a great team, right? <laughs> it's just incredible. So I'm gonna start with a question that is very self-serving. I hope you'll indulge me. So my, uh, my son will be driving in 10 years from now. And so I've been listening to what you said, both incredibly excited and scared to death. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out what is, what is, a, what is a car gonna look like uh, what percentage of, what, what is the car driving experience going to look like 10 years from now? And even what percentage of cars will be automated? Because I imagine your driver's test is going to be a little different. Yeah. So, um, so first, make sure you tell your young teenage, teenager not to text and drive. That's the most important uh, thing okay. today. That's a message that everyone should take away. What's a vehicle going to look like? By 2025, you'll have automated vehicles on the road. You'll have level five automated vehicles. Um, it, there won't be a lot. They'll be in geofenced urban areas. New York is an ideal sort of location. They'll drive anywhere between zero and probably 45 miles per hour. Uh, driver will be out of the car. They'll be safer than the vehicles that you drive in today, right? I mentioned that 80 to 90 percent of, of traffic accidents are the result of of human error, and you'll be able to do, you know, you'll have more activity, more ability to interact within the car. It'll be connected to the entire ecosystem. Broad-based automated driving, from our view, basically appears in 2030 and beyond, where you as a consumer, the cost of the technology will be at a point where the average consumer can buy a car with that, that capability and park it in their driveway. Thank you, you've given me much hope. Uh, okay, uh, back there. Mike, somebody? We have to do that because the folks online can't hear it if you don't speak into the mic. Hi, I'm Laura Goldmark from a company called Just Results, and we're about pay for performance. Yep. So Kevin, and I would love to hear from any of the other CEOs as well, if you had to add a metric to your pay for performance that was about the broader good, what would that be? You know, I, I, I actually think... Um, I actually think we have a very, very good incentive compensation plan. And I think what made it, took it from good to very good was the strategic results modifier, which was proposed by our compensation committee, which was, you know, more than anything driven about people, recruiting, talent development, culture, all of those activities. And we have metrics that we track against for the senior leadership team as well as the leadership team that runs our business in terms of you know, driving the right capabilities, the right people, but doing it through the right behaviors. Um, so I would say based on where we are today, I think it aligns well. I think it really encourages long-term comp, a high level of, of manager um, executive investment in the company, driving long-term behavior. And then I think the overlay of talent and culture is really an important aspect that was added about five, five years ago. There was a question with the yellow tie, thanks. Hi, Hi Tim Dunn at Terra Alpha Investments. I'm curious as this technologies and your tech capabilities grow, how does that change your relationship with the OEMs uh, in terms of how you work with them and particularly interested in both how you view the uh, potential liability streams of the technology yeah. and how do you manage in that changing world your operations? Sure. No, Could that's you explain a OEM just in case folks don't? Sorry, the car, uh, the car companies. Car companies. Okay. Original equipment to. manufacturers. So those are the car companies. Um, and that's a great question. The, the relationship today, given the re-architecture of the vehicle, the integration of software, things like advanced safety solutions, automated driving, has really translated um, for select suppliers, not everyone, um, a much more strategic relationship with the OE. There's much more of an interdependence. There's much more of a desire for the OE to know 
where we're going from a strategy, from a capability standpoint, where, where those assets reside, and how that dovetails with, with them, which means we need to know what, what their strategy is, which is a much more open, collaborative relationship. From a liability standpoint, you know, that ultimately, when you think about automated vehicles, will, will basically lie with the company making the sale. Um, and from our standpoint, we're enabling with technology, ultimately that goes onto a vehicle and integrated to the vehicle by a original equipment manufacturer or another party. So from our, so from our standpoint, you know, that's something that someone else is gonna have to manage, but it's something that the industry is going to have to figure out. Now, I think it's important to put it in perspective. I, we talked about that spectrum of active safety solution. Low end, 80% of traffic accidents are human error. Again, 90, up to 95% are deemed to be human error. So to the extent you can take the driver out of the vehicle safely, you have a much more, you might have a much safer overall environment. I saw another question over here, left again. We gotta, we gotta get the right side involved here. But Bhakti Merchandani, FCLT Global, which is a think tank focused on long-term value creation. This is a really great presentation. I had two quick questions. Um, one is on cybersecurity. You've yep. spoken a lot about the tremendous advances you've made on vehicle safety. Yep. What are your thoughts on cybersecurity? The other uh, question is around metrics. One of the metrics that you mentioned that sounded really compelling was lost workday cases per 100 employees. To me, that's a measure of, of culture, and, and it sounds like a really strong culture. And you mentioned culture, quality, and talent. So how would you think about kind of one metric each that you could measure and disclose that would be helpful uh, to better understand your business? Sure, sure. So um, cybersecurity, a uh, huge issue, right? The more connectivity we, crea we create in our industry, the greater the risk is from a cybersecurity standpoint. So all of the products that we, and it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an area that all OEMs, all of our partners are very focused on. Ultimate OE, the builder of the car, all the way down to our strategic partners. And it's an area that we've made significant investments from an, enter, you know, for companies like us, historically it was an enterprise issue. Today it's an enterprise and a product issue. So, so cybersecurity is built in to the products we sell. Um, from metrics that we measure, um, I gave you an example. As you can imagine for us, 125 manufacturing facilities, we have 160,000 employees, roughly 25,000 are salaried. So the balance are hourly employees. Safety in, in the manufacturing facilities, as well as in the offices and the technology centers, is critically important. Critically important. Um, and it's, it's quite frankly one of, the, you know, one of our, our key cultural themes. Uh, as it relates to things like talent, we measure diversity, we measure turnover, uh, we measure retention rates, we measure advancement within the organization versus having to go out and hire. So those are all, all, all metrics. With respect to quality, we're in an industry that historically has driven quality to it's the furthest end. And it, that can range from parts per million to hitting, hitting ship windows for a particular OE. There's a whole number of metrics that we track. Well, thank you. We've come to our end of our time here. Um, and I wanted to thank you for okay, giving us you. a glimpse Thanks, into the everybody. future. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, I'm going to have a polling question here, um, and so if you if you have a chance, take out go to slido.com, pound CIF six, and approximately what proportion of the companies you currently hold are successfully communicating their long-term strategies? So this is very helpful feedback for us, and we're not asking for kind of Uber. Everyone gets a five-star rating here. We've got some cool jazz music playing. Okay, we've got 50 Fifty percent, nineteen, and the numbers keep changing a little bit. Ten percent and zero percent. So, 
uh, we've got some areas for improvement here. And with that, we're doing something very important here. It's called a break. You have from 3.35 to 3.55. Uh, and um, please uh, enjoy the break. <laughs> 